In this video, we are going to see how to solve quantile regression problems numerically. In the last two videos, we saw what's the difference between quantile regression and linear regression, and we also discussed the quantile loss and got some intuition for it. In this video, we are going to look at how to solve quantile regression. While linear regression had a closed form solution, quantile regression will require some iterative methods. So our problem is stated like this. We want to find the beta that will minimize the quantile loss given by this equation here. There are a few ways to do so. Among them, formulating the problem as a linear programming problem and solving using linear programming methods, such as simplex or interior point methods. There's also iterated reweighted least squares and gradient methods such as gradient descent. We will go over each one of these separately. Linear programming are problems who have the following form, either in algebraic or matrix notation. We want to optimize some linear function that is restricted by some constraints. The constraints can either be inequality or equality, since we can create equality by using two opposite inequalities together, greater equal and less than equal. Let's see how we can transform our problem to linear programming form. This is our problem. We will introduce the following variables, u, v, l, and m, each representing the positive part of the relevant vector. This notation signifies zeroing out any negative value in the vector. Notice that we can get back the original vector by subtracting the following. Hence, u minus v is equal to y minus x beta, and l minus m is equal to beta. Now we can write the quantile loss as following. Notice that since vi is positive, we multiply the expression by minus one and got one minus alpha instead of alpha minus one. We get the following linear programming optimization problem. Note that now we do not optimize the beta anymore. Instead, we can play around with u, v, l, and m. And so in order to constrain them, we subject the optimization to this constraint, which makes sure that L minus M is equal to beta and U minus V is equal to Y minus X beta. We can also write this in matrix form like this, where B is a matrix that has submatrices X minus X, I the identity, and minus I concatenated across its columns. You can pause the video and verify that this matrix notation is equivalent to the algebraic notation above. Now that we are in linear programming form, we can use standard linear programming algorithms, such as variants of the simplex methods or the interior point methods, to find solutions. I won't get into these algorithms, as there is plenty of material about them online. Let's move to iterated reweighted least squares. The idea of this method is to use a weighted least square solution. The weighted least squares problem is defined like this. Instead of regular squared errors, we add weights to each observation, making some observations more important than others, meaning we want the line to try to go through them more. This is a pretty easy problem with a standard solution. You can check out my generalized least squares video for more details. But since the squared error is not our true objective, we need to modify this method. We will start with a regular OLS solution and then we will update the weights in each round according to the residuals. The exact update is given by this. That is, each element in the diagonal matrix W will get the following. Then we'll update the betas with the updated weights. We'll continue doing this again and again, updating the beta, getting the residuals, and then updating the weight matrix. We usually continue until the betas converge. Now, why does this work? Well, if we place these weights back in the objective function, we see that we actually get the quantile loss. Pause the video to verify for yourself. Notice that in the last stage, I replaced ri in absolute value with the negative ri, but swallowed the minus sign by swapping one minus alpha with alpha minus one. So although we don't optimize the quantile loss directly, 
By the use of weights, we do arrive at the quantile loss. Another possibility is to calculate the gradient and then use some gradient methods, such as gradient descent or any of its variants, Adam, RMS prop, etc. In order to take the gradient of the loss, let's first divide the sum to the cases where the residuals are below zero and when they are greater or equal to zero. Now, when we differentiate with regards to beta, we get minus x i for both terms multiplied by alpha minus one and alpha respectively. We can unite the alpha term to be across all the sum. And so we finally get this. We can now take a step in the opposite direction of the gradient. In most modern applications, we won't actually need to calculate the gradient. It's enough to define the loss in code. Here's a PyTorch implementation of the loss where y hat is x beta. We denote here the residuals by the letter E. Notice how we multiply them by alpha minus one if they are below zero and by alpha if they are above zero. And then we sum them. So there you have it. You now have a basic understanding of quantile regression. There are of course many more things to know and dig into, but this is all for this video. See you in the next one.